BPC-157, the future of medicine or a massive scam? Today, we find out. Now, I have a very personal reason for making this video, and maybe you have one too. I have been sitting on the fence for ages. Should I take it? Shouldn't I take it? Seeing loads of stuff, adverts popping up online everywhere. Now, I'm a physio, and I still practice physiotherapy. We specialize in healing injuries with exercise, movement, and a bit of hands-on therapy here and there, but mainly exercise, loading, and movement. Now, is there enough to persuade me into turning to the dark side and take a banned substance? Yes, this peptide is banned by WADA for reasons we'll get into later. Let's find out. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what it is, how it works, and we'll go over the risks that no one talks about. Quick disclaimer, guys, I'm a physio, not a doctor. So if you're thinking about taking this, go and have a chat to your actual doctor and don't take it until you've got their consent. My name is Peter and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you've been here before, I can't thank you enough and hope you get something out of this one. Quick rant before we get into the crux of this video, and that is I am not going to be speaking in medical jargon. All videos I've watched on BPC-157 are throwing in all the medical terms to make themselves sound smart, where most people do not understand them. I do because I've spent three years studying them, and that's a huge difference. This will be in plain, simple English for everyone to understand. So, first things first, what is it? Well, it's a peptide. Well, that's great, Pete. What's a peptide? A peptide is a few bits of the chain of a protein molecule. This is actually made in our bodies. BPC-157 is made in your stomach, it's made in my stomach, it's one of the things that protects our stomach lining against things like ibuprofen. But this compound has some insane capabilities. So take home message, natural BPC-157 is very localized to the stomach and it's in tiny quantities. So what happens when we up those quantities and put it somewhere else. So all the studies that we come across are all rat studies, those poor buggers, but what we've seen is for ligaments, tendons, muscles, the recovery is insane. They crushed a poor rat's Achilles tendon. They cut poor rat's Achilles tendons. They cut through muscle fibers. And what they found when introducing BPC-157 to those localized areas is insane rates of recovery, as well as the structures recovering slightly better, so stronger recovery than without the BPC-157. So some researchers even put it back into the stomach of rats and what they found is it fixed stomach ulcers, it even fixed full holes in the stomach and it cured IBD as well. So it can fix your muscle injuries, it can fix your tendons, fix your ligaments, fix your stomach. That's not it. It can also fix your nerves. They crushed the sciatic nerve again on some poor rats and guess what? The nerve regeneration and repair and growth was absolutely insane. Nerves take forever to heal in people and sometimes they don't even recover. But with this, every rat in the study recovered and recovered better than without the BPC. And if that's not enough for you, it also fixed bone fracture. So if you had a fracture or the poor rats had a fracture induced by us humans, unfortunately, their bones recovered quicker than the control groups, which it's mind blowing. And to top it all off, there's also anti-inflammatory effects from it. Now, I deal with all of these injuries every day, and most of them we can get better with movement, with loading, with exercise. But there's a few people who just don't get better. One of my patients has a really severe neck disc bulge that's compressing the nerve in his neck and he's lost control of his hand. Now, this is insane. He's spoken to a consultant who then referred him to another consultant. They chatted together, had multiple opinions on it, and decided against surgery because of the risks. Not once was this brought up, and what could be the potential of this compound for him. It's his dominant hand as well, so it could change the lives of millions of people. So next up, how does it manage to do all of this? And the quickest way to answer it is to break down the healing process. So when it comes to healing, to break it down simply, we need nutrients in and waste products out. And the vessels that do this are your blood vessels. Now, BPC-157 increases the growth of these blood vessels to an area which is damaged. Next on the list, the body sends in chemicals to the area which kickstart the healing process and take off the regulators which slow it down. So in other words, remove health and safety so the good people can actually do the work. 
And in order to do the work, we need more materials. And in this case, or in most cases, when it comes to healing and repair in musculoskeletal tissue, we need collagen. So guess what BPC-157 does? Well, all of what we've just spoken about, without exception. And on top of that, it also regenerates the nerve pathways. Now, this is not necessarily important for nerve-only injuries. Let's say someone rolls their ankle, they've torn their ligaments, it's a long road to recovery. One of the hardest things for that person to do is stand on that leg, even once the ligament's fixed in sort of eight to 12 weeks time, is stand on that leg and balance with their eyes closed. Why? Because those nerve pathways, what we call proprioceptors, so sensors within the muscles, the joints, all of that in the foot that tell your brain where your foot is, those get damaged in injury as well. Now, if this can help that, that can really protect against future injuries. So if we can regain those neurological pathways quicker, we're less likely to re-injure or further damage those tissues. So why isn't every doctor, physiotherapist, chiro, osteo prescribing BPC-157 to everyone? Well, it all comes down to one thing. There's no human studies, no long-term research done. I'm sorry, guys, there's a massive rant incoming. I apologize in advance. The first question that I ask myself is how fast did they release the COVID vaccine after very short-term human studies and there were some risks involved? It was lightning fast. Why? Because big pharmaceutical companies gained a huge amount of profit and money from the COVID vaccine. The first studies on BPC-157 came out in the early 1990s, and that was for stomach and gut lining. Then in the mid-1990s, so yes, 25 to 30 years ago, it was found to have musculoskeletal effects. Now, I'm sorry, in 25 to 30 years, sometimes even more if you're looking at the gut lining itself, they could have easily done multiple studies on BPC-157. And there have been zero risks found. The only risk is we don't know. So why the hell haven't they actually done the research? Why haven't they funded it? And the answer is the pain industry makes an absolute killing. Now, I have to say, this is my own opinion. There's no fact that big pharmaceutical companies are stopping these studies, but every human study that has started has been cancelled for unknown reasons that we can't see. And there are currently none being conducted as we speak, or at least there aren't on any of the, the literature sources I've looked at. So we need to ask ourselves, before we go and recommend you go speak to your doctor, what are the risks? And in this case, they're all hypothetical or potential risks. And the main one that I can think of is that increase in blood flow. Now, yes, it's a great thing when it comes to injury and repair. But the word is, the fancy word that I said I wouldn't use is angiogenesis, which is the formation of blood vessels. So it increases capillary formation, getting blood to areas that are damaged. The problem is, if you have cancer, and this is not, they haven't looked at this in rats either, this is theoretical, your body sends more blood vessels to those cancer cells, they can then spread faster and metastasize, which means spread all around the body. Now, this is a potential risk that no one else has really mentioned, and it did come up in one of the journals as a discussion rather than a research study. The other risks are to do with the fact that no medical professional will inject this into your body because there is not enough research to support it and no one wants a lawsuit, myself included. So if I'm going to inject my knee, which is why I'm making this video, I've got Osgood Schlatter, so a massive rhino horn on my left knee, which has upset the left knee patella tendon or patella ligament if you want to get technical. So I'm considering putting it into that knee. Now, I would have to administer that myself. The same as if you want to inject it somewhere, you're probably going to have to do it yourself or get a friend or, or family member to do it. This comes with a huge risk. A, we don't know where we're getting the substance from. And B, we're not trained in infection control. We're not trained in how to actually inject. Because if you stick the needle into the tendon, if you don't know what's underneath and what you're injecting it into, then you could damage that. You can actually slice the tendon with the needle and make things a lot worse. So those are the other risks that come with BPC-157. So it's not the risk of BPC-157. It's the risk of administration of the BPC-157. That is a definite one that we all know about. So if I look at my knee, I ask myself the question, what is the leading cause of osteoarthritis? Well, it's not wear and tear, funny that. It's chronic inflammation within a joint. So long-term injury of a joint that causes inflammation. That is the number one cause. It's not because you're a bricklayer. Some bricklayers don't even get it. So that's out the window. Or genetics. Now, I've had inflammation in this knee since I was 13. I've still got it today. It sucks. It's sore. Whenever I try to step forward lunges, I can't do them. It's literally too painful. Step back lunges, luckily I'm fine. And I've been managing this with shockwave therapy, with acupuncture, massage, 
and a hell of a lot of loading and exercise in the gym. And it's doing a fantastic job, but it hasn't fixed the problem. There's still inflammation there. It's still not a pretty sight when you when I watch the videos back of me doing leg extensions and all I see is a rhino horn with fluid swishing about. I'm sorry for the visuals. I need to ask myself the question, could BBC 157 prevent me from needing a knee replacement one day? And that's one surgery I do not want. I've seen a lot of them go wrong. A lot of them do go right. We've got some brilliant surgeons, but it is a brutal surgery. It's in the top five most painful surgeries that you can have. And I don't plan on having one. So could this be the answer for me? So after hearing all this good stuff, and there's no bad stuff found in any of these animal studies and there's very little bad stuff that we can theoretically come up with too. Why is this banned by WADA? Why has the World Anti-Doping Agency banned BPC-157? And the answer is, there's unknown risks because there's no human studies. That is the only reason. It does not enhance performance. It does not increase how much your muscles grow. Yes, it might help recovery a little bit, but again, we don't know because we haven't studied it. Now, this could put me out of a job as a hands-on physio. Well, the hands-on bit, because if it does the healing, the loading is still very important, and that's where physiotherapy comes into it. But besides that, could someone who's extremely rich, Elon, if you're listening, fund a long-term study on BPC-157 for tendons, for ligaments, for muscles, for nerves, for your stomach, for literally anything that we could have human evidence so we can start using this for patients sometimes tendons take forever to heal why because they don't have good blood supply what does this do increases blood supply so for people who are really struggling tennis elbow for instance people have tennis elbow for 18 months to three years they do everything textbook they have steroid injections to try and reduce it and guess what they still struggle every single day in a huge amount of pain it's not severe, you don't need surgery for it, but it's really, really irritable. And so many people could potentially benefit from BPC-157. And helping millions of people, that is what every healthcare professional signed up for.